Hey guys, and welcome back to Okami. We've got a bit of a, a doggo hunt on our hands here. We must procure some puppers for Princess Fuse. So we're going to bop around this here village, maybe do a few side quests, and then head out into the wide expanse of the world of Okami, trademark Capcom, whatever year it came out, and we'll, you know, get the rest of them. Yeah! Um, so the year it came out was... Oh god, it, I'm pretty sure it was 2006. Uh, that wasn't kind of like a prompt for you to fact check my stuff, mate, you know. I have to say whatever to get these, like, parts off the ground. These intros are just basically poetic nonsense at this point. This is true, but then I feel I need to know my facts to be able to properly get us into these things. And actually I am correct in that Okami came out in 2006 in Japan. And also America, which is nice. It didn't reach Europe until 2007, which is basically why, you know, Okami did as badly as it did, because the PS2 was basically dead at that point. Yeah, because, like, Super Mario Galaxy came out in uh, 07, yeah. from what I recall, so that, that would have mean the Wii would have been out at that point, and, you know, the 360 and the PS3. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous how late some of the PS2 games came out, so um, the PS3 came out November the 11th and November 17th, 2006 in Japan and North America, so that's like a reasonable amount of time after the Japanese release, but you're only looking at like two months after the North American release, so why on earth would people have bought it? Which sucks because it's such a damn good game, but you can see why almost everything was going against Okami when it came out. Yeah, yeah, fucking Philistines, you did this, you watching right now! <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I think I might perhaps be uh, just thinking, right, what, what's my next option? Because... There's some stuff that I can do, there's other stuff that I can't do in Kusa Village, which is really annoying, but you see, it happens. And actually, whilst we're just sort of bopping about the village, do you want to know a little bit about Kusa Village? Might as well, mate. Be the tourism board to me, the public pleb. So, Kusa Village, its Japanese name is Kusanagi Mura, which literally translates to Grass Village. Okay. But... What's really important is the fact that it's called um, Kusanagi Murder, or at least the Kusanagi bit, because in all likelihood it is a reference to Kusanagi no Surugi, which is the grass cutting sword. Nice. Which is very important because it controls the wind, which is very fitting for a village with loads of windmills. Um, but also, Kusanagi no Surugi is a legendary Japanese sword on one of the three imperial regalia of Japan. So basically, it's one of the most important artefacts of Japanese culture, effectively. No one actually knows whether it is real or not, because Shinto priests basically refuse to show the sword. <laughs> it's ours, not yours and the rather unreliable nature of its historical references just means that everyone's just like, I don't even know if it's real or if it is an actual historical artefact. Um, the sword last appeared in 1989 or 1993, don't know why there's a difference in date, but we'll see, um, when Emperor Akihito was sent to the throne. And the sword, along with the other two Im items of the Imperial Regalia, which is the jewel Yasakani no Magatama, Magatama, if you think about Phoenix Wright. Um, of course, yeah. That is what that is based on, roughly. And the Emperor's Privy Seal and the State Seal um, were shrouded in packages, so nobody actually saw the sword or the Magatama or the seal. It's kind of strange, but something that's also quite fun is that... Originally, the sword was called Ama no Murakumo no Surugi, which is Sword of the Gathering Clouds of Heaven. Wow. But it, yeah, but it later changed to the more popular Kusanagi no Surugi. I was gonna say, Kusanagi is a, a term or a word I've heard before. You would have done, because it is just one of those quite famous 
things. So, I'll give you a little bit of the history. I can't go fully into it because it does actually spoil a few things in the plot that's going to take place. Yeah, just if you get to a spoiler, censor it, okay? Yeah, so uh, according to Kajiki, which I think is one of the Japanese texts, um, the god Susano encountered a grieving family of Kunitsukami, um, gods of the land, headed to Ashinazuchi in Izumu province. Right. Um, when he inquired of them, um, they told him that their family was being ravaged by the fearsome Yamata no Orochi. Very important. And then, spoilers, which I can't go into. Um, but basically, for defeating the beast, um, he found the sword Ame no Murakumo no Surugi. Ame? Well, no. So he presented the sword to Amaterasu, because obviously Amaterasu is his sister in actual Japanese mythology, to settle an old grievance, because basically Susana was a dick. Yeah. And then eventually, generations later, in the reign of the 12th Emperor Keiko, um, the sword was given to the great warrior Yamato Takeru, as part of a pair of gifts given by his aunt, Yama Ho- Yamato Hime no Mikoto, the Shrine Maiden of I- Issei Shrine, to protect a nephew in times of peril. Um, these gifts came in handy. I'm basically just quoting Wikipedia at this point, because it's helpful. <laughs> it's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, these gifts came in handy when Yamato Takeru was lured into an, onto an open grassland during a hunting expedition by a treacherous warlord. The lord had fiery arrows loosed to ignite the grass and trap Yamato Takeru in the field so that he would burn to death. He also killed the warrior's horse to prevent his escape. Desperately, Yamato Takeru used the Ame no Murakumo no Surugi to cut back the grass and remove fuel from the fire, but in doing so, he discovered that the sword enabled him to control the wind and caused it to move in the direction of his swing. Taking advantage of this magic, Yamato Takeru used his other gift, Fire Strikers, to enlarge the fire in the direction of the Lord and his men, and he used <laughs> the winds controlled by the sword to sweep the blaze towards them. Got him! In triumph, Yamato Takeru renamed the sword Kusanagi no Surugi, Grass Cutter Sword, to commemorate his narrow victory and his escape. Eventually, Yamato Takeru married and later fell in battle with a monster, after ignoring his wife's advice to take the sword with him. So he had this badass sword, what a dumbass. saved his life, and then he didn't take him with him the next time he was going into a difficult battle. He was an idiot. I, I, it wasn't the sword who did that cool stuff, it was me. You know, mm, it was all me. Exactly. <laughs> The other little bit of detail about Kusanagi is that allegedly it's kept at the Atsuta Shrine, but it's not available for public display, and obviously, as I said, its existence cannot be confirmed. Huh. And, uh, look! A big bear that looks like Sleepy. It's quite funny. Did that thing just move? Is it alive? (laughs) Um, well, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it might be dead, it might not be, but, uh, here! We have a Daruma doll. Oh, yes. Which um, is quite fun because obviously, if you've played any Pokemon, you will probably recognise this because it is uh, the basis for, I believe, Darumaka and Darmanitan. Yep. Zen mode specifically, I believe. Yes. So it's a hollow, round Japanese traditional doll modelled after Buddy Dama. The founder of the Zen sect of Buddhism. Well, there you go then, yeah. I'm just sitting here just going, oh my god, all of these words that I can't actually properly <laughs> pronounce, but I've got, to, I've got to style it out anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're doing the best you can for being such a backer gaijin. Well, yeah, because ultimately, I haven't studied Japanese. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but yes, here we have... Uh, lady on the loo, and we're just being an asshole because, uh, why not? Just like, come on, come out the loo, we need to speak to you, duck. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. We are actually going to leave and come back, and hopefully she'll be finished on the loo because that would be helpful. Yeah, it would. What, does she actually have some significance in our quest for the doggo poppers? Well, she didn't have any importance in the quest for the doggo puppers, but she has a side quest that I would very much like to be doing. Oh, okay. 
And here she is. She's all done. This is Haruka. And she's just gonna talk about stuff happening. Yes, as characters I want to do, Richie. You could have been a bit more specific. <laughs> well, basically, she's talking about her story and her father being murdered by monsters, and she went on a journey to avenge his death, but she's obviously weak as all hell. The name Haruka um, can be written using different kanji and can mean a variety of things. Um, though the main thing is like flower, that sort of thing. It's a uh, maze Japanese name in Pokemon, I believe. That would make sense. Um, so, all of the characters relate to distance, um, but Haruka itself can mean spring or fragrance, spring or flower, sunny weather or fragrance, and distance or flower, depending on the uh, kanji used. There is an entire list of characters that have the name Haruka and Maze on there. Um, Haruka or Helga from Apescape A Million Monkeys is there. There you go. You've got Haruka Domeki um, from Triple X Holic, which is awesome. And a variety of other things as well. I imagine a lot more anime on there, but yeah, let's cut to the truth. A lot of anime. And just to make somebody quite happy if they are watching at all, Haruka Nanase from Free. Which is that, that swimming anime. Yeah. Yes, I think I know who we're talking about here. Yes. <laughs> Fucking posted borderline hentai on Twitter at like 10 in the morning, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know! Fucking thirsty twat, I love him. <laughs> 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 so, we are, I believe, getting quite close to wrapping up everything that we can possibly do in uh, Kusa Village. Obviously, we've got that manifest now, which as soon as we head out into Taka Pass, we will try to deal with. Uh huh. But I just wanted to head up here first because there's a bit of dialogue that we can get which. I thought might be quite useful, but also I wanted to make sure I had all of the animals. Or I mean, I might not even be going into the shrine to get the bit of dialogue that I thought would be quite fun. Mostly, I'm just going, right, I've got animals, I've got dig spots that I need to try and find, because I've, I've got, like, in my head, I've got a checklist of how I'm completing an area. Yeah, yeah. And... Obviously, the fact that it's not night time at the minute is driving me balmy. I mean, it looks like it's night. I don't think it's quite there, otherwise we'd be getting the bright lights out. And there we go, I finally found the dig spot, thanks to little thingy sticking out the bottom. Wasn't exactly worth it, but... Well, I guess you could sell it. Yeah, exactly, we can sell it, and that will uh, end well. We've got another little thing that I can talk about to do with Kusa Village whilst we continue our running about. And it's not really been entirely... Well, it's not that visible at the minute because the wind isn't blowing and it's all really depressing. Yeah, fair enough. But you can so. see these streamers... Oh, yeah, yeah. ...that should very much put you in mind of something that's very common in Japan, which is um, Koino Bori, which is the carp streamer. Basically, they're carp-shaped wind socks um, that are traditionally flown in Japan to celebrate Tango no Seku, which is um, a designated holiday, and it is... Well, let, let me just double-check exactly what it is, because I think I was about to go on to potentially a different holiday. I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, that would be egg on your face and no mistake, bro. So, uh, Tangu no Seko is also known as Ayame no Hi, which is the Irish festival, and it's one of five annual festival ceremonies um, traditionally held at the Japanese imperial court called Goseku. And the Tan means beginning, the Go means horse, referring to the Chinese zodiac. Um, Seku means a seasonal festival, so basically it's the beginning of the horse in a way, which is okay. strange. The horse is beginning! Really dramatic, actually, when you say it like that. <laughs> and until recently, um, 
The holiday was known as Boys' Day. Okay. Also known as Feast of Banners. While Girls' Day, Hinamatsun, was celebrated on March 3rd. Um, but then I think they decided, yeah, let's just stop that and make a day to celebrate happiness of all children and to express gratitude to mothers. So the holiday was renamed Kodomo no Hi. So it was a uh, children's holiday, basically. Okay. And before the day, families raised the carp-shaped konyabori. Um, uh, basically, they are carp because of the Chinese legend that a carp that swims upstream becomes a dragon. And the way the flags blow in the wind looks like they're swimming. One for each boy or child display a um, kintaro doll, usually riding on a large carp. Uh-huh. And they also have the traditional Japanese military helmet, the kabuto. And basically, Kintaro and the Kabuto are symbols of a strong and healthy boy. And I think that pretty much covers everything. There's also stuff to do with food and all sorts, but you get the main gist of what the holiday is there. And actually, the whole thing with fish, like carp swimming up stream, I'm pretty sure that is the basis for Magic Carp and Gyarados. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So obviously you've got a, a carp that transforms into a dragon by swimming. It's quite fitting, actually. And just goes to prove that Pokemon is fascinating for its cultural references. It really is. Like it's very like it's deceptively simple. Yeah. Like these references and whatnot. But as you know, we've been discussing at this part, or rather, you've been discussing, and I've just been going uh-huh, every so often. <laughs> it's it goes further than you might believe. Ultimately, even if you don't realise it, you are subconsciously getting taught about Japanese culture. It's not explicit in any way, unless you actively delve into the whole thing, but you are just getting introduced to these concepts that you wouldn't necessarily otherwise come across, and I find that quite fascinating. And also I love it because it's just fun because it's learning without having to sit down and just do the boring thing of going, oh, I'm just going through a dull textbook that doesn't necessarily make things exciting. It's entertainment, mate, and I love that. It's like stuff like Magic School Bus and fucking the old Bill Nye stuff, Beekman's World, etc. Obviously that's television shows, I guess you could say Captain Pie to an extent. I mean, it's got Jeff Goldblum in it, you know, you can't get more edutainment-tastic than that. <laughs> So yes, before we do anything else with our dog quest, we just want to finish off this manifest. <laughs> Weirdo the Abhorrent, what the hell? There's some glorious names that go on during these manifests, and I just love them because it's just basically just like negative name the negative thing. Pushing eyes the despise, what the hell? Yeah, Curse Guild the Repulsive. Like, these all sound like really good supervillain names. Yeah, just like, you go to a battle, Lord Zed. Oh, you got you haven't got an adjective at the end? No, I'm just Lord Z I can't copy or imitate. Uh, what's his name? Axelrod? I forget his first name, but uh, he is amazing. Um, I don't think I've seen any of his things, actually. I think it's Robert Axelrod, but don't quote me on that. Oh, it's Molly! Oh, yeah, oh god, here we go. So... <laughs> I accidentally ran into this, and then thought, I can't leave until I complete it. So, um, Moli wants to play. Oh boy. And this is phase two, and it's awful. Because practically, as soon as you get close, they're going to dig in and just... Oh my god. God, this is awful. It took me so long that I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to crossfade. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you. This took me, like, I don't even know how long. It just, it's so annoying. Because there's also no real way of telling exactly where he's going to show up. So it just sort of becomes a bit of a guessing game of just going, well, I'll just try and hit whatever comes out of this hole because it's just not going to go well for me and yeah this is not worth it 
in the slightest, because all we're going to get out of this is a bloody vase. Well, you're the one who said you wanted to go for 100%, Mr. Man. I know. I regret it entirely, because it was not worth it at all. But, whatever. And I think that uh, unless it decides to turn to night time anytime soon. Oh, this is something we're going to do. So when we were in Kusa Village, we bought a pinwheel. And someone around here, I believe, was wanting a pinwheel. So uh, we're going to give it to him and hopefully get some praise, because that would be nice. Here is a free thing. Do you like me now? Yes. Challenge achieved. <laughs> This is actually applicable in real life. If you give people stuff, they will like you. But it won't be real kind of admiration. It will be fake, because if you don't continue to give them stuff, somehow they'll lose interest in you. Hmm. Yeah, it's... People are weird, basically. No, the people are fake when they want to be. So don't try and buy friends. That's the lesson here, guys. Yeah, because it, it's just not going to end well for anybody. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be depressed because, one, you've spent money on people who now don't care about you. Um, and also, they're going to be annoyed. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't care how they feel, motherfuckers. <laughs> I, this is weird because I'm getting angry at, like, hypothetical situations here. Stuff that hasn't happened that I just made up. Well, you see, that, that that's because you care so much about fictional people. It's why we are, you know, doing a commentary over a video game. Yeah, you're making me look bad here, mate. I'm not, like, trying to waifu hypothetical people here. I hope you understand. Bulging eyes to despise. That's a Dark Souls boss. But yeah, Tom, honestly, I wouldn't worry about caring about fictional characters because you, you talk into Muggins here, who basically has cried at every single Professor Layton game to date, bar perhaps Miracle Mask, because that one annoyed me. No, I'm not talking about fictional people. I made, I made up a hypothetical situation about fake friends. I wasn't talking about anyone in particular. They're not fictional characters, they just don't exist, period. Well, no, but they exist in your hypothetical situation. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. Stop making me out to be smarter than I appear. Christ. You're giving me standards to live up to, and I, I can't be doing with this. <laughs> Do it again. Yeah, I, I apparently cannot draw a straight line. <laughs> which is really annoying, because it's just like... It's straight, it's just at an angle. It's fine, it happens, it's the curse of playing with a Wiimote and not really having that steadier hand. Mm, well. I mean, T Tom should definitely remember this because he helped me out with recording Lost Winds for, the, for Health Icoms yes, like, actually, a yeah. while ago. And yes, you, you probably remember, Tom, that uh, at the start of the recording it was just like I was shaking a little bit just because... When, when I sit down to play a game, I'm sort of, I don't keep my hands steady. So you were just like, just stop messing about with the control. I'm just like, come on, I'm just, I'm just holding the damn thing. Yeah, I felt really bad by the end, but it was good because the playthrough turned out great at the end. Exactly, so it was all worth it, but... <laughs> yeah, Muggins here can't really draw straight lines. This is why, when it came to the wonderful 101, I actually was really grateful to get used to the stick drawing because it's a lot more accurate and actually I mean, considering that game is so action heavy you do learn to pull off the moves very quickly and actually more quickly than probably drawing perhaps yeah and thankfully we only have one more of these manifest things to get so that's good. Remind me again how you can tell which of uh, these, like, demon tag thingamabobs have the people we're looking for in? Is it random? Um, it is a sent... So, it's not quite random, as I think they are always in the same sort of location. Okay. But it is effectively random in that there's nothing in the overworld that can tell you exactly where these blighters are. So... 
potentially you can get them all in one night, and that's wonderful. Um, there is also the very strong possibility that it'll take more than one night, and then you're buggered, basically. You're going to have to wait the entire day. Ah, son of a bitch. I mean, obviously you could do the smart thing of go do something else whilst you wait for it to turn tonight. <laughs> Just go grab a copper or something, yeah. But obviously I'm the kind of nut job where it's just like, I'm doing one job, I want to complete this job before I move on to the next job. Just because, I mean, particularly in terms of doing playthroughs and commentaries, it just makes more sense to keep things contained. At least in my mind, anyway. Well, that's just, like, being efficient, mate. There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. What, are you just going to ignore that gold glowing thing on the ground? There's not anything we can do about it really annoyingly just yet. <sighs> Damn it, damn it, damn it! Will, just, just not now. Okay. So I guess we're gonna go turn the manifest in and that's it for this part? Um, perhaps. But then also perhaps not. We might just decide to do a few other little bits and bobs. We might even decide to progress the plot before we go and take the manifest in. No, I'm looking at the time here, mate, and uh, I think you're full of shit, personally. <laughs> Like, you can't pull a fast one on me, mate. I'm the guy who mediates these cobs, all right? I'm always looking at the timer. Yeah, well, we're going to go into the Cutter's house because I feel something might be in here. 